Alrighty, good afternoon. Welcome to my daily broadcast. Just make sure that I'm framing myself okay. Um, if you haven't seen me before, let me choose myself. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. Um, recently nicknamed a guardian of the feminine, which is always an interesting label to um, try on for size. So I do these talks every day um, on Facebook Live and then also put them onto YouTube, so you may be watching it there, or here if you're watching it on YouTube. Yeah, I think you get my point. Um, and I usually do them at 5 p.m. Pacific time, which I missed yesterday, I did it early yesterday, but normally 5 p.m. Pacific time, if you want to catch me live on Facebook. And they are called, as an overarching theme, Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. These are daily broadcasts, and I've done these for a while, because this is number 375. Yes, I'm keeping track. <laughs> and today's topic is um, titled, basically, Relationship is a Two-Way Street, which is not an unusual topic, or not an unusual um, description. But I'm, and I'm borrowing some friend of mine. Um, thank you, Laurie Ann, for posting the, the meme that inspired this. Um, I want to talk about this because it's because two-way street does not mean, in, in the point in the title, a freeway and a bike path. Meaning that a two-way street should be equal two-way street, and that's what I'm going to get into that a bit more. Because for many women, I'll start with that because there's more to talk about besides that. For many women, there are um, so I'll make sure I have a, oops, get it, there we go. All right, make sure I've got the right um, thing on my screen. Ignore what I'm doing, I'm just like, messing with the screen. Um, for a lot of women, being in a, um, I can say this in a nice way, unequal relationship is kind of the norm. There are many women I know, and many women you might know, maybe you too, I've been in a relationship where that highway was very much in, in, the, in favor of the man in the relationship, and you had the secondary road, as it were, the, the less than equal path. Because I'm going to speak a lot now in this moment about equality, because that's what I mean about two-way street. Two-way streets of equal width. Equal width. So they run side by side, equal distance. So each gets fair time, each gets fair play, and each one gets fair roles in the relationship. Now, I'm going to break that down a bit further, so bear with me. But again, let me speak first of all to the, the problem, the paradigm where it hasn't worked for many years because the structure we come from, the framework of relationships we grew out of, men ran the show. And I've talked about this before, but in this context, let's, let me just re reiterate some of the cliff notes, as it were. For many, um, of, particularly of our parents' generation and beyond, and beyond that, or before that, the man ran the show because... One, the woman wasn't taking care of herself financially. She was work, living at home till she got married. She didn't have a job, a career, a car, an apartment, her own stuff, her own bank accounts even. So the men ran the show, and that's fine, really, for that generation. But we aren't there anymore. And the change that I believe is required, what I'm firmly in believing needs to, needs to be updated, as it were, is the rule book. I have another topic I was going to do today, but I'm going to do it tomorrow about who pays. But that's a whole, that's a can of worms I haven't chosen to open today yet. But in this context of relationship, of having equal communication, equal connection, and equal receptivity, many people haven't woken up to the new paradigm. And it isn't that new, but people haven't woken up to it still. A lot of people I know are still treating a relationship in an old-fashioned, in quotes, sort of way. Now... The benefits of being old-fashioned for men and women when it comes down to gentlemanly conduct and respect and things like that, yes, the man goes out of his way to serve, support, and take care of his woman. Absolutely. But communication, making choices, having decision-making abilities, that is what should be equal. It, should, it needs to be equal. The word should always puts pressure on me. The wording doesn't. So having equality on both sides of the conversation for communication, for decision-making, now... The nuance of decision-making I'll get to in a second, so I'll come back to that. But having equality where communication was back and forward, and, and this is the piece, that each person's opinion has equal value, because that's what I mean by communication both ways. So it's not about how much time each person talks for, you're not using a stopwatch. 
<clears throat> but it's about both partners receiving and respecting each other's opinion. And quite a lot of relationships don't have that. So I'm suggesting you want to have that in your relationships. Now, decision-making piece, I want to get back to that one for a second. There's a distinct, a distinct um, subtlety, maybe the right word, but definitely a piece that's out of a, that's, um, let me just put on the table and explain what I'm, as I'm going along. So, as I said, two-way street for communication, for an acceptance, and also for decision-making. Decision However, in a healthy relationship between masculine and feminine polarity, the masculine energy usually leads. And I'm using energy versus gender because masculine is an energy, not a gender. And I've talked about that before. So, the masculine generally makes the decisions. And so if the man is usually in the masculine, then he makes more decisions for like where you're going to go to dinner, um, for where you're going on vacation, things like that, than the feminine does. Now, in that position, in that process, both partners can be in the masculine at the same time because you're decision-making, you're working things out, which is a masculine focus. It doesn't matter if you're male or female. Let us sink in for a second. Because decision-making truly is a masculine energetic the feminine is more of embracing and inclusive. The masculine is more pairing away to get down to the one choice, which is what decision-making really is. And so for a healthy relationship, both partners can switch to the masculine for decision-making. doesn't upset the balance. doesn't take away from your chemistry. It's a choice point because, just give me a whole bunch of downloads right now, we, as men and women, inhabit and, and own both polarities in our lives, masculine and feminine. So when we move between one and the other, we can do that as flexibility requires it, but to do certain things. For example, being in the masculine is good for decision-making, pairing away what doesn't fit to get to the one final choice, because that's the masculine practice, is single focus, lasering in, having that hunter mentality to go for the goal and pursue what needs to be done. Both men and women can do that. Not to live like that, let me be clear about that, but to do that. Both partners can be in the feminine at certain times. When you have a baby, you're both nurturing and taking care of. Absolutely pulls the feminine out of us because it has to be. The feminine is the embracing, the nurturing, the loving space, which both men and women have able to access to them as well. Some of you may never see that in your lives, but it's in there. You have both available. And I talked about that last week or a week before about the percentages of polarity we carry naturally within us. So that's what it's already covered in previous broadcasts. So back to this one. To have a clear um, recognition, so Nikki was saying, was just discussing this with two male friends earlier today and our conclusions agreed with what you're saying. Well, thank you. I'm glad to know that. Thank you for confirming. I had a feeling I might be on track with this. <laughs> Usually these topics come up and they are, they're, they're present for me because they're things I know the answer to, or I should say I know where it's going to go, where I may end up knowing what the answer is. Sometimes I don't know what the answer is yet, but thank you for that feedback, Nikki. I appreciate that. Um, so decision-making and having that clarity is, as I said, a masculine pr practice or masculine-centric uh, activity, not necessarily a gender-based thing, so male or female. So let's get back to the, the, the two-way street idea. Um, oh, let me, sorry, let me go back and recap for decision-making. One thing I forgot to drop in there. When, especially on initial dating and as relationships go along, it's the masculine-centered partner who is best assigned to make decisions for dates where to go, that sort of stuff. If the woman is in a masculine making decisions all the time, and I can speak from past experience in relationships, it didn't work. When she keeps making the decisions, she's going to get really worn out and tired and frustrated with the man not making the decisions. So naturally speaking, gen again, generalities-wise, the masculine is inhabited by the man. The, the, yes, the masculine is inhabited by the male and the feminine is inhabited by the female, generally speaking, in, in a heterosexual relationship. So the masculine partner, the man, generally speaking, because sometimes the other way around, as I've said before, makes the decisions and she enjoys the ride in the feminine. Communication, that's another one of those subtleties, is having the ability to understand each other's positions and points because to be really um, transparent, I know a lot of people in relationships where the man overrides the woman every single time. And it's unfortunate, it's inappropriate, and it's disrespectful. And men, listen up. If you want a healthy relationship with a woman, especially modern days relationships, take the time to listen, please. Be of service to your partner to let her vent and respect. Because the other part also for a lot of women is 
You don't need to do anything about what she says, gentlemen. You, but just being present and listening is enough. There's nothing to fix. And I've talked to that, that. I mean, these are all different things I've talked about before, but it's in this context, I just want to drop the reminder that in communication, there is definitely a two-way street, and having the ability as a man to listen to his woman without having to fix her or defend himself or to run away or to argue, smart move. So communication both ways is vital. Um, the leadership following energetic is usually masculine and feminine energy, and masculine generally leads, feminine usually, well, I'm going to be careful I say that, I might be in trouble. Because again, not polarity based. The woman could be the masculine leading, or the man could be the masculine leading. It works either way. But I'm thinking just sitting with if the feminine leads too. The feminine leads in a different way. And that's the thing about the difference between masculine and feminine, is the masculine energy leads singular, leads everything. I'm in charge, taking care of it. The feminine leads with everybody else. Excuse me. So it embraces everybody and everything at the same time. I think that, yeah, that works. I'm just checking inside if that works or not. So. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> so leadership definitely can be from a masculine-centered place. Again, each partner can carry the masculine that's needed at different times. I'm just watching if there's anything else to talk about here. Yeah, hang on a second. Rewinding, rewinding. I mean, the simple topic about two-way street is kind of obvious, but it's watching how many people don't do that in relationships. So here's your, um, <laughs> your assignment if you're in a relationship is look to your past few months, few weeks in a relationship and consider where you have been having an equally balanced two-way street of communication, connection, leadership, direction, feeling, expression, all the different things that make up your relationship. And if it's not balanced, what can you do about it to change that? That's, that's homework, basically, if you're in a relationship. If you're not in a relationship, if you're single, entertain the idea of this. Because in your past relationships, maybe you didn't have a balance in your communication with your past partners. And maybe that's a problem, in quotes, that you've been frustrated with and you haven't been in a relationship because of that. So consider how you can be in a relationship in equality going forward. And you may want to add it to your list of qualities you want to have in a relationship, by the way. So you have direction and clarity and focus on what you want to have in your romantic expression. Because it sounds so simple. But we have bad habits as human beings. We take we have habits we've got ingrained in our subconscious. We run all the time without realizing it. Once we get comfortable in a relationship, those habits seem to show up. So I would say being vigilant is probably a smart move. <laughs> if you want a relationship to succeed, if you want it to grow and become more powerful, more equal, more balanced, more successful, be vigilant about your habits. Be vigilant about what your defaults, your romantic behaviors are because they will tend to undermine what you're looking for usually. And that's not the topic I'm getting into now, but I don't want to go down that road just yet. But just let, me, let me say this. So if you're single, just review your past relationships, where you were out of balance, and also what your habits were in those times. It might be eye-opening for you if you never look back. For some of you, looking back at your past relationships is a first-time activity now. I highly recommend it to see where you've been, what you didn't do the way you wanted, and what you did do the way you wanted, so you can get some focus and clarity where you want to go next. And that's enough homework. I think that's going to cover the points. So you got my point. I mean, this is a simple broadcast for that purpose. If you haven't seen my other broadcasts, by the way, this is number 375. Yes, I do keep track. All of my previous broadcasts are available for you to watch on my, um, they're on my website. They're also on YouTube and also on my business page on Facebook. So let me give you those out. Um, all my social media is Barry Selby. Easy to find. My business page on Facebook is barryselby.author. So you can find it on, on Facebook for that, for all my replays. On my YouTube channel, which is, again, Barry, so is the, mess, is the uh, channel. Messages for the Masculine is a playlist. You can find them all there. And they also end up on my website, where, I'll, where there's a couple of things I want to say. One is the video blog on there is going to get updated at some point. But right now, all of them live on one page, which is a bit overloaded right now with 375 broadcasts. Well, 374 plus this one. Um, but that's a video blog on my website, again, barryselby.com. Um, check on that tomorrow. <laughs> If you're watching this tomorrow, great. I, my site's got my site's just like glitch at the moment. I need to fix that. So it will be available on my website, which is barrysober.com forward slash vlog or video blog. If you go look it on the domain, I mean on the uh, navigate menu. Um, or if you want to get uh, some support in your relationship, go to my website there again. Actually, do it this way. Go to the Love Confidant. That's the old name, and it still works. So thelovecomfidant.com. 
you can go to click on Let's Chat, which is where you sign up for a discovery session with me, or go to the video blog to watch my videos there, or you can go check out my book, my coaching, everything else. That's the old name, but it's going to change to my new name. That's why there's some glitches going on. So with that, I will thank you for watching. I wish you well, and take care of yourself. You deserve the best in relationship, but I, not but, you deserve the best in relationship, and start by giving it to yourself. And with that, I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.